There sure is a whole lot to unpack here with Cube World, isn't there? There's like years, years of just waiting. And then when you get like a trickle of a, a single tweet, everybody freaks out. Phone blows up all over the place. Everyone's just like, oh my God, we got something. And then here we are some five, six years later, and we're finally in the beta. And people are starting to realize that the game did not evolve the way they had envisioned the game evolving. Now, we're not developers. We're definitely not developing this particular title. But when we saw a skill tree some years ago, we would think naturally it would be an expanded skill tree. Or at the very least, it would still exist. But stuff like that is just gone. So I don't really want to approach this as a, here's what Cube World used to be and what it could have been and what it is now. Instead, I would like to approach this as, here's what the game is like now, because old Cube World is gone. Now it was pretty broke. Don't, don't you try, don't you dare. Don't you try to lot. don't, it was broken. You know it was. But the new one is broken in its own special way. <laughs> Character creation. There are eight races, four classes, and two genders, which is how you know it's a 2013 game. You also have a number of hairstyles and faces. And that varies wildly depending on which gender and which race you choose. For example, the human male has something like 15 different haircuts or something, uh, while the human female has nine. And the frog, I think the frog female has like two different faces. Uh, it's just, it's just all over the place. And given that we've had at least some kind of insight into their development process, we've seen with Pixie, uh, that's uh, Wally's uh, wife, and also the other person helping work on some of the uh, voxel textures or voxel models uh, in Cube World. We've actually seen the tools that they use to make these things. And so we know that there really isn't a whole lot necessary to, to go into creating, at least creating the actual model for some new hairstyles. At the very least, just make bald an option for all of them, and that'll unlock an extra look for every single character. Overall, I would say that the character creation is about on par with the game that came out around 2011-2012. And by game, I mean like indie game. Obviously, we had AAA MMOs that had just absolutely insane, insane character creators. But this isn't that. So we have to give them some slack for just being two of them. But at the same time, we have to remember it's been like five or six years. Now, once you create your character, it pops you down into a random biome and you're usually near a town where you could go and pick up a number of quests. Now, picking up quests is simple. You basically just go in and you talk to a whole bunch of dudes and one of them is bound to give you something to go and do. And that could be any number of things. You can go and save an NPC from a group of mobs and that'll free up the trade routes and you have better items inside the stores, but those items generally suck because you end up farming the gear you need in order to complete the quest and that gear is typically better than the gear you end up unlocking in the stupid store. Or you go and fight some like mini boss or something on top of a hill, or you do some underground mines, or you do a fortress, and there's all kinds of things you could do. There's definitely no shortage of things you could do within a biome, but that same template repeats itself for every biome after this, which is that feeling of just basically starting over every time you complete a biome. So everything that you do here is to try to get a check mark on that particular point in the map, right? So that point of interest now has a check mark. So what happens when you get check marks on everything in the region? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, in some cases you do get a reward called an artifact. Other times it's like just general loot and weapons and armor and all that good stuff, things you'd expect. But occasionally, occasionally you'll get an artifact, usually at the highest difficulty point on your map. Uh, I have seen it actually drop in other places as well, but the artifact is your progression. There is no XP, you're not gonna continue leveling up via like farming mobs or anything. As a matter of fact, you just completely ignore mobs for the most part, except for when you need resources or money or whatever. Uh, it's all done by gear and specifically these artifacts. And what it does is, and each one is different, it grants you a very, very, very small stat increase that eventually it'll stack up. You know, I'm like level nine right now and I've got, you know, a negligible amount of perks based off of the amount of equipment that I've picked up. I'm only 17 hours into the game. <laughs> I've worked hard for this extra, extra tiny little percentage right here. 
The other form of, I guess you could kind of call it some kind of gear progression is plus gear. Now, what is plus gear? Honestly, I, I, I don't even know if I can actually tell you, but I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how you acquire and what what it does. Obviously, it's gear. It functions like gear, right? You get two animes, I'm gonna hit stuff with it, right? But the plus means that you can take it outside of the region. So I'm gonna do my very best to explain one of the recent theories on how this works. So a piece of plus gear can drop from a mob. It could be found uh, in vendors. It could, there, you could basically get it wherever. Wherever you get it, maybe from that point, you draw a circle, right? And basically the radius of that circle, we don't know how big it is. Uh, any biome that falls within that radius, you're supposed to be able to use it. I think that was the last thing, or maybe, no, maybe you still lose the ability to use it in other biomes and other regions if you're outside. I don't actually know how it works, and it's because it fucking changes every day. Now, this is fine. I know it's frustrating, but it's fine because, you know, this is part of being, this is, this is what it's like being part of the new game experience, is going through as a community and trying to figure out how shit works. And you know, it is unorthodox, and I have to give them credit for it being so, because it's different than what we typically expect, which is probably one of the reasons why a lot of people are getting upset, because they're used to playing games a certain way, things should just work a certain way, I gotta have XP, I can't function with XP, what's going on? But the problem is, the loop repeats itself and it makes you start over way too soon, there is just no, like, that the drop rate or something for plus gear is just too low because I mean I I have not had a single one drop for me not one so I've completed a number of different regions and all of it has been for not because I basically just get to restart the, everything when I move on to the next zone. and when I mean restart everything I mean like if you cross a border and you don't have a like mount skill or a flying skill or a boat for that other region it's gone. <laughs> like you just get kicked off. This isn't fun. <laughs> the first time it was fun. The second time it was kind of interesting. That was the perk for me. I, I discovered the jungle, a jungle biome, and I was just like, "Whoa! I've never been to a jungle biome. This is awesome. Like visually, it's so striking." And when I, and right now, it's like I want to go back and play and continue completing that biome. That's the only draw for me to go back and play the game. But what happens when I complete one of every biome? Then it's just like, all right, well, I, I guess I could go back and start all over again in a biome I've already done, but it's a different region, technically. Thankfully, the gameplay is good. Like the actual gameplay, rolling around, blocking, like active block, and charging attacks, the combos and chaining things together, and all this stuff, and, and potting in the middle of a fight, and dropping bombs, like all this stuff is exactly where it needs to be. Does not need to change. Wasn't a problem before, is not a problem now. As you've already seen examples of, there's a number of different ways you get around. There's the pet mount, and you can get pets by just going and finding the thing that they like. So for example, the alpaca might want a venti ice, skinny hazelnut macchiato, sugar-free syrup, extra shot, light ice, no whip. Because that's the kind of weird shit the animals in Cube World like to eat. So and then you feed it to them, and they become friends for life. And you can carry a whole bunch of them and swap them out, depending on if you need DPS or a tanky animal or a faster one, because each one has a different mount speed. But you can't ride them until you get the reins, and the reins are located in a random place in every single region. So you have to get it at least once for every single region that you go and explore. You can also climb, you can get a boat, and you can use a glider. The glider is not quite as good as it used to be, but it needed to be nerfed somehow. But I actually kind of like the way it used to be, but we're not here to talk about what it used to be. We're here to talk about now. And it's just all right right now. By the way, this friends list, uh, sorted by, oh, fuck it. I don't even know. Like, just a fucking nightmare. But I will say that the multiplayer is pretty solid, even though it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Like, there's no servers or anything anymore, or at least for the foreseeable future. But the actual peer-to-peer -peer is pretty solid. I think we got it up to like eight people or something, and I was streaming, and I was the one hosting, and it was just pretty much flawless. Like one person started lagging out a little bit, uh, but for the most part, pretty good. And of course, I don't need to tell you this, but when you play games with friends, like the game is better, right? So I don't think really explain that part. So that's really, we're not even gonna take that into consideration. Yeah, I had a blast playing the game with friends, but that's what happens when you play games with friends. So let's explore this town a little bit, because these towns are pretty much the lifeblood of the game itself. It's where your quest hub, it's where you do all your crafting, it's where 
you can uh, you can sleep to make the night go away because the night's pretty freaking dark and your lamp is very very short ranged but this is the crafting area all right so this is where you go and you can break down wood into wood blocks we'll go over here i don't think i actually have any uh, gold cube which we'll break down in a second wood cube i can't really do anything that because i don't have any wood uh, let's actually go over to, uh, this is where you actually go to modify workbench here. I gotta show you this here. If I can just stop on it, here we go. Uh, this will actually go through and craft, sorry, and craft things, but I need an anvil for those. Can I make anything here? Yeah, I think other classes might be able to make, like, bows, arrows, or something like that. But I can't make shit here. So let's go to the part, this is where, this is the place that matters right over here. So this is where you go through and you can take these, uh, these little iron blocks that, you, that you've, uh, you've collected. And you can stick them on some gear and make it look fancy. Right, so if I wanted to go through, maybe I wanted to go through, maybe just add a, you know, maybe add a, maybe an extra spike here or something, and then another one here. Uh, bam! Look at that. Actually, kind of changing the silhouette of your, uh, uh, of your weapon. But the problem is that this weapon's not gonna last very long because the second I complete this this area or leave this area, it's basically useless. So I don't even know why I would end up doing that. And then over here is where you go through. You can smell stuff. I think I have a couple pieces of gold. I can make some gold cubes. Doop, ba doop. Over here. See if I could craft anything. I can't craft anything because some of the stuff that was required to craft these things is like ridiculous. I mean, just here's something that just out of our reach here. What do I need here? I need a 45 15 or I need I have that. Do I need like oh I, I could have done it right now actually. <laughs> I had the resources for it. It's a purple. What do I got here? So I have this part. I need ooh, six more of those. Damn, I keep on just throwing things away. How about some of those glorious shit here? Diamonds. Boy, I guess I never seen a diamond before. Damn. And I need 50 of these iron cubes. And it's just fucking expensive, and there's no plus on it, so I can't even take it outside of the damn region. It's useless. It's just useless. Now, I can't go through and craft some things if I wanted to, just out here in the open. I have the ability to, I think in some cases I could go ahead and just do some things without, yeah, pineapple slice. I can make a pineapple slice without a fire. Lemonade, I don't need a fire for that, but I do need uh, some ice cubes, and another sugar cube, and a water flask. Water flasks are easy. Go stand in some water with an empty flask. And then click on them and you'll make some water flasks. So some things you can make on the go if you need to. You have some cooking supplies. You have, uh, you have these right here. You can go through and you can make some, uh, some potions. Cactus photo, a uh, potion. This is the one that I think gives you, uh, this is stores health. A life this gives you, uh, more, more health. 20% more health. Elixir of power. Damage plus 20%. Toughness. Sanity. Resistance plus 20%. So there's, there's a number of things you can go through and you can craft your, on your own. You find these resources just kind of scattered throughout the, uh, the entire world. You can also go over here and just talk to the, uh, the the shopkeep, and you can get some items from them. Sometimes they have rare items, like for example, they have a sugar cube, right? Or a carrot, you could use that to go and pick up another pet if you want. Let's see, the inn, we've already done the inn already. Was well, there something across the way here? Let me go and zoom in on this thing. Uh, that's right, identify. This is where you go through and you can submit some things if you have to, uh, if you can hear it. Well, this is perfect, leftovers. You can go ahead and identify this, cost eight gold, and it'll give you some, uh, this is going be some good ass loot, actually. Let's see, legendary, there we go. There you go, okay, so that is much pretty, eh, pretty good, we got an upgrade, what's up? Wait, can I use it anywhere? Let me see, uh, no plus, no plus, no plus, no plus, I haven't checked this in a while. No plus, no, I just came from another zone too, so some of this gear is probably pretty garbage. Then I swap it out yet, yeah, everyone's standing around, I can't help you, Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, you have a wheel here, and you have a loom over here, that's right, yeah, this is for, obviously, for other, like, mages, pretty much. Everybody rolls a mage, because mages are awesome, I guess, but that's pretty much it, I think. Let's go, Donut. Let's get out of here. That was a real shitty zoom. I was trying to make it look like I was right off in the sunset, but the zoom is kind of wonky like that. So, yep. Just pretend. So, like I said, there's a lot to unpack here. Like, the game has a lot of redeeming qualities, but unfortunately, most of them are very poorly implemented and just not fun long term. Like I said earlier, the biggest reason for me to go back right now, like right now, is to go and complete that jungle biome because it's new for me. And then maybe I'll go do like a lava biome and then I think there's like an undead biome. Like there's a number of different biomes out there. It's not just, you know, uh, summer, spring, fall, winter. It's not like that. Like it's, it's actually pretty complex. There's actually a number of different variations of things. Uh, I don't know how many there are, it might be like, you know, seven or eight, but it, it's definitely more than like four. So, at least I'll know that, let's see, I've completed like uh, four or five uh, different regions right now. At least I know that there's at least a handful of other 
regions that I can go and explore uh, that will be new. And that'll be the only draw that I have, again, because I'll be starting over unless I just, like, randomly get a ton of plus gear that nobody really knows how uh, the fuck works. There is something real. There is something very wrong with this uh, embankment. Hold on a second. No, no, hold on, hold on. It's kind of as well. Ugh. Dude, it's a whole river that like banks downward and then goes back up. <laughs> uh oh, I'm out of it. I'm out of stamina. Oh well, rip. So anyways, we know that Wally is sensitive to feedback. By his own admission, he's sensitive to feedback. He had issues with the first time around where he basically disappeared because everybody was just clamoring for more and more and he couldn't deliver and the pressure and all that stuff and he caved. And now people are like worried that he's gonna cave again. As of this recording right now, and it probably means nothing, it probably means nothing, but as of this recording, the actual Cube World dev update, the dev log, uh, uh, a yeah, blogger has been taken down. This just happened like a, like a few hours ago as I'm recording this. And that's kind of strange, but cubeworld.com is still up. Uh, we don't know if this is a sign that he's kind of like rearranging things or what, but think about it. The whole community is like, oh my God, is he gonna go on hiding again? Doesn't that suck? Like it's, it's like, we're so worried that he, that we're gonna, like, by giving him feedback, that we're gonna trigger him and he's gonna disappear for another five or six years. And you know, I understand that anxiety sucks. Like, I, I get that. I totally get that. But you have to figure out a way to create a product without, well, with a middleman or something. Go through a publisher. I mean, it's fucking Cube World, man. Some publisher out there somewhere will happily be the middleman just and just get off Twitter and just work on the game but I don't know man like it's this is such a weird situation like who knows who knows and it's too late now what's it gonna do delete his Twitter account <laughs> I shouldn't say that because he fucking might <laughs> the bottom line is the game has a very very fun core game loop that lasts for a basically about a few hours and then it diminishes on every repeat and that's the part that sucks and that's the part that people are upset about with the game because once you repeat it a handful of times diminishing returns it sucks now right after 20 something hours for some folks or 50 hours or who knows how many hours it's gotta really suck but if you see the value in spending $20 on a game that you might get bored of in 15 hours well, maybe this is a good game for you, but otherwise, I just gotta tell you, man, like, I, I couldn't recommend it. I won't recommend this at all. I don't even want my son to know about this game. <laughs> no fucking way. And again, it's, I'm not saying that I don't like the game. Personally, I like the game, and I love playing with other folks and playing and exploring and all that stuff. Like, the, this game is really a really great, fun, like, co-op title uh, with the way that, you know, it's, it's easy to form a party. You just invite people to your group. You can, uh, you can teleport to each other, you can, I mean, it's just, it just really lends itself well to co-op play, but it's still very shallow. And so with that, you know, I just can't recommend it. We don't know if we're going to get any more updates. Like, <laughs> Anyways, that's it. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Thank you so much for your guys' continued support. This one took a long time to get all the fucking footage for it. Of course, we wanted to make sure that it was done right. Like, there's a lot that was changing on a day-to-day -day basis. And it was very, very difficult to keep up with it because, you know, we weren't getting a lot of information, which is fine because, again, the discovery phase of the new game, right? Everyone's discovering everything. We don't have, you know, a cube head or anything like that, .com to go to and uh, plug in a certain thing and it just tells me everything. Like, we're discovering things still. So it was a lot of fun. Like, that part was a lot of fun. But you know what? I pretty much ruined the game for you guys. Like, if you, if you watch this video, I've already explained all the shit that we spent hours just discovering and figuring out for ourselves. And so I've taken that fun away from you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I've taken that fun away from you. And so already you've lost a significant percentage of the value of the game just by watching a review. Boy, that says a lot, doesn't it? Oh man. Anyways, thank you guys for continued support. I love y'all very much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your whatever. See ya.